Tommy V in Michigan. He was on fire this morning. Hey, thank you, Tommy V in Michigan. Th that, yes, sir. If you, if you share my prayers. Mm -hmm. my Tommy V's on. Yeah, we'll jump over there. Tommy V doing great stuff over there. Your Honor, I believe that's it for the males. Wait a minute. You, what about Mr. Sutton? Oh, Mr. Sutton, yeah. And also Watson? Watson. Uh, they were not on the list. Um, does Mr. Watson need to be interviewed? No, they've both been interviewed. I have them on the list. Do you? Okay. I they were added. Okay. okay, um, let me grab Mr. Sutton. I'll be right back, Your Honor. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. no, no, no. Stand behind the black line. Oh, it's not you should no. state your full name for the judge. My name is Matthias Luke Sutton. Thank you, Mr. Sutton. Mr. Uh, Sutton, no. I'm going to ask you to back. Your case number is 2405728401, Mr. Sutton. You have an attorney. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Kashava Kirkland, on behalf of Mr. Sutton, who has been advised of his rights, which is to stand mute and wait before my reading. Thank you. I'm going to enter plea of not guilty. Court dates are May 28th, 2024, Bravo Cause Conference, followed by preliminary examination June 3rd, 2024. Both matters are in front of Judge Sabri. Mr. Sutton, while this case is pending, there is no assault or combative behavior on your part. Do you understand that, sir? I don't know what you just said at all. I can't hear nothing. Okay, Mr. Sutton, your court dates, June, excuse me, court dates, May 28th. That's in front of Judge Sabri, 9 o'clock. It's virtual. June 3rd, 2024. Please listen. June 3rd, 2024. Preliminary examination in front of Judge Sabri. Bond condition. You're not going to have any assaultive or combative behavior. They cannot even charge me with nothing. What about today? What did I do? She hasn't even given you a bond yet. Let her finish what she's doing. Okay. She's about to, if you be quiet, let her talk. Okay. She'll Again, Mr. Sutton, I told you, Mr. Sutton, I told you the court dates. I also gave you bond conditions. Let me tell you what you're charged with. Police officer, assaulting, resisting, obstructing. It occurred on May 17, 2024. It is in the area of my Again, Mr. Sutton, apparently you cannot stay quiet while this court is talking. So oh, you had an opportunity to talk to an attorney, okay, and your attorney represented that uh, you were talked to, you were given your, well, apparently he left. Judge, Judge, he does have a pretty serious mental condition. He's schizophrenic. And he's been off of his, he usually takes his medication twice a day. He's been off of his meds while in custody. So I, Do you... I, do you wish to have him brought back for the arraignment, or are you going to waive his presence? Judge, I'd request to waive his presence. Okay, because we already gave four dates. We already gave bond condition. Yes. Counsel Coyle? Yes, Your Honor, and I, and I agree with that. I saw that in his history. Uh, it's a psychological issue. And for that reason, Your Honor, I think that this is a flight and dangerousness because of that. Um and so I'm requesting a $25,000 cash tether house arrest if he has a home to be tethered to. I do note he had a 2018 unarmed robbery under HIDA status. I also noted, um, I could see in the APA's notes, on December 19th of 2023, an assault and battery was dismissed under a delayed sentence of 771. 
So that was somewhat brief then. Um, and in the write-up itself, the officers are on the lookout for an felonious assault, aggravated um, uh, suspect. They see the defendant tosses a rock at the scout car. It's assaultive. It struck another unrelated passing car. He resists uh, cuffing, doesn't want to get the car, he close the door. And then he starts banging his head on the uh, cage partition. Uh, damage that partition had to go to uh, Detroit receiving. It is very, very um, unfortunate that he has a mental issue, but it also, he's got some um, plate issues with an alias given for that other case and that he's got a prior unarmed robbery under HIDA status, as well as I believe that A and B that got dismissed under 771. So he is assaulted. For these reasons, Your Honor, I'm asking for that cash bond with a tether. Was it $25,000 cash surety or $25,000 10%? I asked for $25,000 cash surety um, with a tether. Okay. Go ahead, counsel. Thank you, Judge. My apologies. I, I, I would ask that he be brought back to the screen. I've just been notified that I can't represent him without him being on the screen. Uh, Your Honor, he, he's uh, refused to participate in the proceedings. Okay. Well, he was already in front of the proceedings. This is just his argument for bond. Ask him if he wants to come back to hear his argument for bond or hear the or, or at least hear the results of the bond. Uh, okay. If you give him a Your Honor, I can go back and ask him. Okay. Uh, just give me one moment, Your Honor. Judge, I'd still like to argue bond. Then, if Your Honor is going to decide on bond, I would still like to argue bond, even if he does not come back to the screen. Okay. You want me to go now? No. Oh. Oh, wait till DDC says he can or cannot. Okay. Or says, or will, or will not. Okay. Your Honor, he's back. Thank you. Go ahead, counsel. Thank you, Your Honor. Judge, I am going to ask for a personal bond in this case. Um, I'd ask specifically that, you know, if this court wanted to tether him to somewhere that um, this, this court, he does have a family member's home to, that he can tether to. He, he stays with his cousin. Um, alternatively, I'd ask this court just issue a condition that he, you know, take his medication. And ask this court not punish him for having a, a mental health condition. I know that people make the argument that, you know, because of his his, his uh, mental condition that, that caused him to be er um, erratic. And specifically, they used a, a recent case where he took diversion. I put forth to the court that's not a conviction. And there are a series of reasons that people take diversion cases um, because it ends in a dismissal. So we are asking for a personal bond um, that he be allowed to go to with other, uh, his, his uh, cousin's home, not objecting to a tether. You know, he's not employed. He is a lifelong resident. Um, nothing currently going on, no pending cases, probation um, or parole. I just asked for, you know, a condition that he take his medication and specifically release so he can, you know, be on his medication. He's not receiving it in there. Thank you. Well, I do receive medication. medication. I don't know. I'm trying to stop talking. I do have medication to take. It's just like, I don't know the reason why the police kept following me in the middle. Thank you. I understand, All Mr. Right. Senate. DDC, um, just mark his file medical. Okay. And just for the record, uh, Mr. Sutton uh, left the camera area during arraignment. Defense counsel waived his presence after the dates and bond condition were given to Mr. Sutton. Um, counsel for the people gave her argument. Defense counsel basically said she needed Mr. Sutton back in front of the camera presence. Uh, he was brought back uh, to the camera. Uh, counsel for the people indicated they want a $25,000 cash surety GPS tether. They listed some prior convictions, I believe, that was either under diversion or under some sort of statute that indicate that it wouldn't be a conviction. But the court has noted, okay, 
And also it was noted either by both sides or by one side that he does have some issues, uh, medical issues. So, but what all starts as is that court are investigating a gentleman and Mr. Sun who was walking southbound on mayors in this particular matter. Uh, while officers had observed uh, Mr. Sutton, at some point, Mr. Sutton uh, picked up a rock, tossed it at a scout car. It didn't hit the scout car, struck a passing motorist vehicle. Uh, when officers went to deal with Mr. Sutton, uh, he was walking backwards, not complying with officers request to stop at some point uh, uh, he was they were going to I'm not sure if it was to detain him or place him in the scout car at some point um, he prevented himself by being placed in the scout car he was in the scout car at some point began striking his forehead onto the cage he kicked the door kicked the cage Allegedly, he damaged the cage. And then not only that, but at one point, uh, as he was being transported, or he was at the hospital. Your Honor, uh, my apologies, that, but if we can get a minute. That's okay. In reference to uh, Mr. Sutton, he indicated that he was going to spit out a police officer. He did. It uh, came on to Officer Harrison's body chest and left arm area. The court does find that Mr. Sutton, whether he's on his medications or not, okay, uh, I don't know if he is better on his medications, but definitely he is a danger. And in this particular matter, bond is going to be $15,000 cash surety. It's going to be an unaffordable bond. So he's going to get a court date May 21st, 2024, nine o'clock in front of Judge McConnell or Judge Williams, who will look at his um, bond amount and bond conditions. He's also going to have to be placed on a GPS tether, house arrest. Uh, Your Honor, my apologies. Uh, we had to escort him out of the uh, room. He picked up a stapler in an attempt to assault officers. Uh, I didn't hear any of what you had That's said. That's all right. I'm going to give it to you right now. Okay. Okay, are you ready? Yeah, go ahead, Your Honor. Okay. He's got a bond of $50,000 cash surety, no assault of behavior. He's supposed to take his prescribed medications. He's on a GPS tether house arrest. Please mark his file medical. Do you need the court dates? Uh, May 28th and June 3rd. Yes, he's also getting the court date of May 21st, 2024. It's Tuesday, 9 o'clock in front of Judge McConnell or Judge Williams for a bond redetermination hearing. Copy that, Your Honor. And my thank apologies, you. I thank you for the assistance. No problem. What's your name, ma'am? Chanel Ligon, L-I-G-O-N. Chanel Nicole Ligon? Yes, may I speak with the counsel? Judge, my understanding is this, a P this is a PPO and that we're not supposed to represent PPOs. <laughs> Ms. Ligon, is my understanding? Well, I, 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 I have no counsel, Kirkland, but uh, Ms. Lagarde, is my understanding from defense counsel, Ms. Kirkland, is that they don't represent people that are accused of violating a personal protection order. You understand that, ma'am? Okay. So my right. issue is that I was following the judge's court order from April to Okay. Let, let me say this, ma'am. Okay, Ms. Lagarde. Okay, I'll give you all the information. You have a right to speak, but if you do, okay, understand you uh, may say something that can be used against you in this violation of first protection order. I'm just letting you know that. Do you understand all that so far? I do. Okay, let me tell you what the case number is. Case number is 240023. It's a violation of a personal protection order. 
I'm going to enter in a plea of not guilty. You have a court date of May 20th, 2024, 9 o'clock. It's at the City County Building, also known as the Coleman Young Municipal Center, in front of Judge Sholak. You understand the court date, ma'am? That is tomorrow. I have a question. Hold on, but did you understand the information I gave you? Yes. Okay. And let me also tell you some bond conditions. You are not to have contact with the complainant who is a Jones. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Hold on, ma'am. A Rodney Jones. That means no person to person contact, no contact to third parties, no phone calls, no emails, no text messaging. You're not to possess any firearms or any other dangerous weapons. Now, you did you understand the bond conditions, ma'am? Absolutely. Okay. However, now, however, now, however yes. remember, remember, Ms. Legon, is that while you do have the right to speak, okay, if you do say something, it could, it could be used against you. So, is your question about the bond condition, or is it about uh, the bond conditions? Or the court date? Um, so the conditions of the bond are no problem. However, the issue that I'm up against right now and the reason that I'm here is because on April 29th, I was told to have police escorts meet me at the location so that I could get my personal belongings from the property. I did that and called the police to make sure that I was not in violation of any orders. So this was a wrongful arrest. Okay, thank you for that information, ma'am. So, but this court so doesn't have any issue to deal with any of that. So, right. so my only issue, my issue is giving my belongings from the property. If you can mandate that that has to take place in order for me to honor the court order. Because the gentleman lives at the property where my belongings are. So in order for me to confirm that my belongings are not in the property, I would need the police to actually escort me into the location in spite of the order. And I would need okay. that to be documented so that I'm not arrested again like this, because that's what happened. I appreciate all that information, ma'am. But that is not, that's something that you're going to have to take up with Judge Cholak tomorrow. Okay. okay? Yes, ma'am. Bring that to so the court's attention. Bring that to the court's attention. Pardon me? Is that, are you, so will I be released so that I can go to court tomorrow? So that I can no, you're going to be legal. still in custody. Ms. Ligon, you're still in custody. You're going to go in front of the judge tomorrow. Okay, can I speak with legal counsel so that I can address? Because that's what I'm that's what I'm asking for right now. That may be uh that may be tomorrow, ma'am. You hear me, Ms. Ligon? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So uh you're gonna go, you're remanded. You're going to go, you're going to sit in jail till tomorrow when you're going to see Judge Cholak or whoever's going to substitute for him at 9 o'clock, May 20th, 9 a.m. at the City County Building, also known as the Coleman Young Municipal Senate. I was hoping to serve the, the protection order when I was at the property. Okay. All right. So to the police officer. I just want it on record. Thank you. Okay. I I appreciate all that, Ms. Lagan, and everything is on record. And you can bring all that information up to Judge Sholak. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Good luck. Come on, ma'am.